Okay, so welcome to this next play uh, video in uh, the playlist on functional analysis. So in this video, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, see that the metric space L, oh dear, LP uh, with uh, the uh, normal metric that we've discussed on LP, so I might denote that DP, um, is uh, a complete metric space. So that's the topic for this video is a complete metric space. Okay, uh, so just to remind you of uh, what this metric space is, the LP metric space is firstly a set, and it's a set of sequences, so it's the set of all sequences, which I'll denote x, uh, so we might write this x1, x2, x3, x4, etc dot 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 and uh, these entries in this in this sequence can either be real or complex numbers depending on whether you want to talk about the real LP space or the complex LP space now both the real and complex LP space are complete metric spaces so we're going to try and keep our discussion general in this um, in this video where so these entries are real or complex numbers so I'll put real slash complex and um, the sequences have to obey some properties so uh, the the property that they have to obey is that the sum from 1 to infinity of the modulus of all the terms so xi to the power of p needs to be some finite value so it's the set of all real or complex sequences um, which obey that property and if this is the real LP space then this just means the absolute value if it's the complex LP space then this means the complex modulus function okay but of course the absolute value overlaps with the complex uh, modulus function so uh, on the real viewing the real numbers as a subset of the complex plane uh, the modulus function on the complex plane is exactly the same as the absolute value function on that real on that real line okay uh, so um, so what's the metric that we put on it? So dp between two sequences, x and y, uh, so let's say x is a sequence of real or complex numbers, x1, x2, x3, etc. And y is also a sequence like that, so is equal to a sequence y1, y2, y3, etc. Uh, then the distance between the two of them, the distance with this uh, subscript P, the DP distance in this metric space, is going to def be defined to be equal to, and I should just say X and Y are both elements of LP, they're not just any old sequences, they are sequences which obey this. Then the distance between those two sequences is going to be defined to be equal to the sum uh, from I is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of Xi minus Yi to the power of p, and then you take this entire great converge, you know, you take this, which is really a limit of the partial sums, as uh, you uh, complete the uh, sum to greater and greater heights, and then you take the limit of that, so you add up this in great big sum, if you like, and then you take whatever value you get, which um, it is going to be finite, and I'll just discuss that in a moment, and then take it to the power of 1 over p. Now, this is well defined uh, because this, uh, this, um, this thing inside is going to be finite. It's going to be some finite positive uh, real number, real, uh, yes, some finite positive real number, providing that x and y are elements of LP. And the reason that that occurs is that we can apply the Minkowski in a quality, uh, which says that uh, the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi plus yi to the power, sorry, the modulus to the power of p, all of that to the power of 1 over p is going to be less than or equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi to the power of p, to the power of 1 over p, plus uh, the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of yi to the power of p, or to the power of 1 over p. So that's the Minkowski inequality, and we discussed that uh, earlier on in this playlist. We proved that in an earlier play uh, in an earlier video. Okay, so in this case, what you would do is uh, you would uh, you would view why uh, you'd what you would do is you'd say that uh, this is effectively plus 
negative yi, and uh, you'd, uh, you'd say that that was your sequence, basically. So if y is an element of LP, then, it of, then y, negative y is also going to be an element of LP, where you define negative y just to be the negative of all of the uh, terms of the sequence. And that follows just because the modulus, when you work out the modulus of it, uh, of each of the terms like this, it, it doesn't care whether they've got negative signs in front of them. So if, if the y sequence obeys this property, then the negative y sequence will also obey that property. So negative y will also be an element of LP. Okay, uh, so uh, what you can view this as effectively is uh, saying uh, what what is this uh, great big sum to the power of 1 over P for the sequence x minus y. Okay, and then you can just apply this Minkowski inequality and say that uh, the dis this distance is going to be less than or equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity, now we put in the modulus of xi, xi to the power of p, or to the power of 1 over p, and now I'll just pull it out to make it easier to write, uh, plus um, the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of negative yi to the power of p, all of that to the power of 1 over p. Okay, uh, I'm sorry it's a bit squashed at the bottom there, but now what we just say is, okay, the modulus is going to get rid of that negative sign, and then providing both x and y are elements of LP, these two things are finite values because uh, that's the condition for them to be in LP. Therefore, when we take them to the power of 1 over P, that's still some positive finite number. Uh, so uh, when we add two of those things together, we're still going to end up with a positive finite number. So this is well defined. It is going to be non-negative, and you can check. In fact, we check in far earlier videos that this does obey the uh, four axioms of a metric space. Okay, so now what we want to do is understand why this metric space uh, is a complete metric space. Uh, but before we do that, we need to understand limits. Uh, we need to understand the topic of li of what a, of uh, well, we need to understand a bit more about uh, limits in this metric space. I if we have a sequence of um, a sequence of sequences. Uh, so a sequence in this metric space, what's it going to converge to? And we're going to find out that just like in the case of L infinity, where sequences of sequences converge, if they converge in this metric space, they converge to whatever they converge to term-wise. So basically, let me, um, let me show you what I mean by this. So let's say we have a sequence S, which is now a sequence of sequences. So it's a sequence of elements in this metric space. So let's say it's... Um, x1, x2, x3, etc. And these now are all sequences. So x1 is a sequence of real or complex numbers, x2 is a sequence of real or complex numbers, x3 is a sequence of complex, real or complex numbers. And we are going to say that it converges in dp, so it converges according to this metric space, to another sequence which we'll call L. Okay, uh, so let me just write this out in uh, in the way we did for uh, uh, L, uh, for L infinity. So x1 is going to be a sequence, basically. So I'm going to turn this 1 into a superscript here. So x1, and then the subscript is now going to denote the term of the sequence. So it's the same notation we used in L infinity. So then we've got x1, 2, which is the second term of the first sequence, x1, 3, which is the third term of the first sequence, and so on. So that's the first sequence in this sequence of sequences. Then we've got x2, which I'll denote x2, superscript 2, to denote that it's the second sequence in this sequence. Uh, and then we'll use the subscript again to denote the term uh, of uh, the second sequence, which it is. So that's the second and third term of the second sequence. Okay, and uh, we uh, could go on, but we won't bother. Uh, and then this converges down uh, to some value, let's say down here, uh, which is uh, this sequence L, which is a sequence, again, of real or complex numbers L1, L2, L3, etc. And what, basically, we are going to find out is that if this sequence of sequences converges to this sequence L in the metric of, uh, of LP, i.e. this DP metric, then this sequence here is in fact going to be the sequence that you get if you take the term-wise limits, or it's going to be the point-wise. It's going to converge to the same thing as if you just took the point-wise limit of this. So basically, when I talk about term-wise sequences, what I mean is create me a new sequence 
create me a new sequence. Where should I put this without ruining my picture? So create me a new sequence. Let's take the first term sequence. And basically what you do is you create a sequence of real or complex numbers. And the way you do it is you take the first term from the first sequence and put that in position 1. You then go to the second sequence and take the second, uh, sorry, the first term of the second sequence, so x21. You go on, you take the first term from the third sequence, so you go on down here, and you basically take all of the uh, first terms from all of these sequences down here, like this, and you get a new sequence of real or complex numbers. Now, what we are going to see is that if this sequence of sequences converges to this sequence in this DP metric, that that implies that all of these term-wise sequences, so if you take the first term sequence, you take the second term sequence, you take the third term sequence, etc. If you take all of these term-wise sequences, they are all going to be convergent. No buts, they will all be convergent. And in fact, what they converge to will be the will be their corresponding term in this limit sequence down here. So this sequence, this first term sequence, will converge to the first term of this sequence of this sequence down here. So they are converging to L1 down here. Similarly, L the uh, sequence of second terms will converge to the second term of the limit sequence. So. Um, let me get another colour. This sequence here will converge down to L2, etc. And this is always the case. If, if it converges in DP, this will be the case. So if you have a sequence of sequences in the LP metric space, and you want to know, I'm oh, sorry, and you know that they converge, uh, and we're going to see that LP is Cauchy, so, uh, sorry, is complete. So if you check that this sequence is Cauchy, uh, which we haven't proven yet, we, it, that will imply that it is convergent in the DP metric space. Okay, uh, and say, but you, say you now want to know what actually does it converge to. A way you can do that is just take the term y sequences and see what they converge to, and then construct a sequence out of the limits of the term y sequences, basically. Uh, so if a sequence of sequences converges in the DP metric space on LP, uh, then it, uh, it will converge to the same thing as it will converge basically to its point-wise limit. Uh, what uh, is similar, similarly to in L infinity, however, if you have a sequence of sequences which converges point-wise, um, it does not necessarily imply that it does converge in LP. Okay, uh, so I will cut that video there and we'll discuss this in more detail and prove these things in the next video.